Hey everyone, welcome to the Roto Grinders Morning Grind Podcast. I'm your host, Stevie TPFL. It's Monday, it's April 8th, it is 2024. We have a nine-game MLB slate to talk about here on today's podcast. Joined today by my good buddy, Will Priester, Chief Just So Six. Chief, how's it going, my friend? Oh, it's going, man. Um, definitely ready to break this slate down. I, I don't, I'm not sure if you know, so you I don't think we've talked about this specifically, but to kick off the MLB season, I wasn't able to really play DFS over the weekend just because I had so much personal stuff going on. But like as I've been playing, and I, I think we did talk about this, you know, one day. I've been so close to GPP takedowns every day I've played DFS. I mean, just right there, Stevie, but just qu- can't quite get all the way. I know the big one is coming. Uh, I, I, I didn't have a great time in the prop scene over the weekend, but that's to be expected. I've, I've gone through this song and dance before, usually early in the year. It's a little bit more inconsistent. As we get around to May and June, I'll be cooking with hot grease in the prop streets, putting some sweeps together. I'm doing fine, but I'm just saying, like, I'm talking about some of those massive days. But hopefully uh, in DFS, man, we, we can take something down in this slate and get my first bank for the year. Yeah, I've had a couple close calls. I finished second, I think, three times in single entry um, baseball stuff. So, yeah, it's been – I mean, I think I've only had one losing day uh, to start the year. So, it's been fantastic. I'm I'm ready, man. I I love baseball season. I talk about it all the time. Um, NASCAR, Derek says, how boring was that race? I I mean, this package at Martinsville just isn't working. They have a lot of work to do there. So, yeah. it was a it was a snoozer for sure. Uh, Johnson says, "Let's get paid today." What's up, my two favorite people? What's up, man? We appreciate that. Uh, ready to, uh, you know, break the slate down. First look, as always, at this slate, and uh, it's an interesting one. Pitching and everything like that. We got uh, college basketball going on. Who do you, who do you got? You got um, UConn or Purdue? Um, I, I, I'm going to take UConn here. I think UConn is the better team all around. Um, once again, it would not shock me if if you if Purdue found a way to just really win this thing and Zach Eady goes crazy. But I, like straight up, I think UConn's the better team, and, and so that in, in in this sport, man, I'm, I'm going to take who I think is the best. I, I think UConn's the best team. But 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 kudos to Purdue for going all the way. I don't think a lot of people, even experts. We're thinking Purdue was going to get there. Like there was, there were a lot of teams that had to lose for them to get there, and a lot of teams that they had to beat as well. So, kudos to them for uh, for getting up, getting getting all the way. You know, who I picked to win in my bracket. UConn? Purdue over UConn. Ah. So I am. I'm like I'm a, okay. I'm alive in my bracket. I had a lot of misses, yeah. but um, uh, could I mean my bracket points wise super solid so um but yeah i'm, I'm rooting for purdue and like I, I honestly said i don't have like a rooting factor in either team but um my wife's uncle is he went to school at purdue so um, i'm rooting for purdue for him tomorrow or tonight whenever you listen to the podcast so yeah and i want them to win for my bracket i want to say like i picked the winner in my bracket so uh nine nine baseball games hope everyone had a fantastic weekend let's talk some baseball seattle at toronto eight total in this game slight favorite to the blue jays minus 118 almost a pick em. we got luis castillo and jose barrios facing off against each other here any interest in luis castillo yeah i have some interest stevie toronto I- i'm really not afraid of this team right now in, like overall overall yeah. They got some good hitters. Um, you know, the one thing about Castillo right now, Steve, is he's giving up a lot of hits. I don't like that. He's giving them up against Boston. He's giving them up against Cleveland. Um, almost went, you know, almost went six innings. What I do like, though, his pitch count, Stevie started out 91 pitches, 99 pitches in the second game. He's ready to go in terms of uh, in terms of his leash. So if, if he's pitching well, I think he's going to continue to roll. I don't see him giving up 10 hits to the Toronto Blue Jays. I think he has a nice outing here at 9,400, most expensive pitch on the slate on, on DraftKings. I'm fine with it. Not most expensive, I'm sorry. Right there in the mid-range, almost. He's third most expensive. Uh, I'm, I'm fine with him despite the fact that he hasn't quite gotten there. 
The strikeouts are still there. Had five in the first game, six in the second game. If he can keep, if he can get the hits down and uh, and keep and keep the ball in the park, keep the runs down, the the fantasy points will come. All, all that to say, I'm okay with Castillo today. You know what Boston and Cleveland have in common? They have a lot of lefties. Oh, yeah. Do you know what Toronto doesn't have? Toronto doesn't have a lot of lefties. I, I mean, there is a chance that we get six or seven right-handed hitters in this lineup tomorrow for the Blue Jays. And Luis Castillo, even last season, was dominant against right-handed bats. You know, even his struggles this year, if we look at his two starts, it's two starts, but 35% K rate against righties, 18% against lefties, 300 ISO, zero ISO, 86 Woba to 550. Lefties have been beating up Castillo to start the season. And he just came off of a low strikeout team and had seven Ks, which is a great sign. You talked about the pitch count being good. That's a great sign. So when I'm looking at Luis Castillo, I love this matchup handiness wise, you know, getting all these right handed hitters here. I would like it a little bit more if it was in Seattle, because I mean, definitely a better pitcher's ballpark in Seattle than in Toronto. But I still think Luis Castillo. I think he's a top five pitcher on the slate. I think this is a really good spot for him overall today. And then going to the other side, you got Jose Barrios. I mean, he has started the season kind of struggling a little bit as well. I'm a little concerned about Barrios just because like he doesn't necessarily have that like dominant strikeout stuff where like Castillo could get into trouble and he could use some whiff pitches and, you know, get ahead in counts and, get out of jams like Barrios really hasn't shown like that type of ceiling yet to start the season. There's a lot of strikeouts in the Seattle lineup. Definitely boosts his like potential strikeout upside. He's 7,100 on DK. Any interest here in Barrios? Yes, D. You pretty much set this thing up. I mean, you put it on a T for me. Everything that I was going to try to contribute to the conversation you've said, I just want to reinforce I think this is purely a price and possible upside play. Like sometimes, Stevie, you know, the, the pitcher doesn't have to be elite. Like we know Jose Barrios is an elite, but he is okay. And at 7,100 against Seattle at home, I'm okay with it. If Babbitt's in his favor and we get another 21 points like we did against Tampa, I, I'm okay with that today, Stevie. I'm okay with 21 from him at 7,100. Not saying he gets to 21, but generally speaking, if we had a repeat of that performance, I take that all day. So at 7,100, I'm in. Yeah, I mean, he's been he's been really good uh, against left-handed hitters this season. And we and we see that from time to time with guys that throw like sinker-cutter combos. Right-handed pitchers throw sinker-cutter combos. They can pitch well against left-handed hitters. But, I mean, even in, his, in, in, in the struggles so far this season, like, Still generating a good amount of whiffs on like his fastball, so that's always good. It's sitting a little bit higher than it was last year, so like the velocity is already there for Barrios, like early in the season, which is, I mean, a, a positive sign here. So, yeah, I'm with you on Barrios, I like him in this spot. I think both pitchers in play. Um, let's talk bats. If you're not playing Barrios, any interest in the Seattle bats here? Yeah, listen, I, for right now, Stevie, no matter what the spot is. As long as we can get Julio, like, what I call reasonably priced to his possible upside. Like, I know, look, man, he hasn't really really been crushing this season. But at 5,600, at some point, the, the double dong game is coming, Steve. It, it's on the way, right? Like, it, this isn't going to continue. At 5,600, I'm okay with rolling him out there. Same thing with Cal Raleigh. Um, you know, like, if you know if he's going to be in the lineup, this is another guy that's got pretty good power. I'm okay playing him as well. Uh, I'm not lining up to play Seattle guys today for what it's worth, but these big bats, which which are you know some of the obvious ones, I I just can't ignore Julio, and I don't feel like he's a guy that's going to pick up a, a whole bunch of steam. Uh, so being able to get a, a good power bat with you know two three home run upside that nobody's going to play today, I, I'm in. One other thing that I just wanted to mention about Barrios is just how bad Seattle has been to start the season. I mean, they're 29th in WRC plus against right-handed pitching. And like, we, it's a very small sample size. And I, and I don't even like looking at like this season stats alone, but you look at the lineup, man, no one's hitting the ball. Well, like they're all struggling the whole entire, like they couldn't get, they couldn't get out of 
you know, Milwaukee fast enough because they have just been struggling so much. So, I mean, I, I think there's two ways to approach it. You know, there's some potential positive regression coming when you're looking at some of the X Woba stuff um, and X ISO stuff. But they, I mean, they got to stop swinging and missing. They're just striking out at such a huge clip. So I think if I'm playing Seattle, like you said, a Julio, Julio Rodriguez one off is something that I never hate doing. But if I'm playing Seattle, I'm probably stacking them, just hoping Barrios doesn't have his stuff. But I have more interest in Barrios than I have in the Seattle bats on the slate. We have bats. For sure, for sure. Don't worry. Sure. We're going to talk about a couple teams that we're going to like a lot today. Um, well, so. One is my team, and they're coming up soon. Don't worry. Yeah, yeah, their next game. So uh, any interest <laughs> here in the Blue Jays? Yeah, no, I, I'm going gonna, I'm, I'm gonna to fully fake Toronto today. Um, you know, in my mind, you think I'd want to play Vlad, but Vlad really – Vlad's not really a crazy power guy to me, like, in general – He's just hitting the ball on the ground too much. So I'm not really sweating it, Stevie. I, I think I'm going to fully fade Toronto, and I, I'm going to feel confident in that. Once again, I just think, you know, I'm going back to Julio for a reason, but I think Julio just not going to hardly get any ownership. Um, and Toronto may not either, but I, I'm okay. I'm going to take the full fade. Yeah, I mean, so we'll talk about Springer a lot this week, I feel like, but Castillo is so good against righties. Like you really want to kind of attack him with um, lefties. So maybe like a one-off Biggio if you like need a cheap like second base play. I don't even know yeah. if he's cheap. I didn't even look at pricing yet. Um, oh, he's 2,900. So, okay. Perfect like one-off punt second base. Like, all right. I don't really love anything at second base today. I'm not going to pay up to get like Kettle Marte or Ozzy Albies. And I'm just going to go down and I'm going to get – Biggio at 2,900 and hope that he, he takes Castillo deep. I mean, that's, I think, definitely viable. All right, let's talk about your Braves. Mets, Braves, nine and a half total. Atlanta, 210 favorite. Julio Tehran back in our lives. Charlie Morton pitching for Atlanta today. Let's go Julio Tehran first. Um, any interest here, Will? No. Yeah, I knew, I knew the fast no was coming. I, I like purposely paused to give you a more dramatic factor there but yeah i, I mean julio tehran is not good he missed last season right he didn't pitch at all um last season he's come out and or no he pitched a if little he bit did, last he was, year. was he with the angels for a little bit yeah he pitched a little bit with the angels last year yeah um not good awful uh looking at the stats now bad um bad 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 uh <laughs> not good yeah, don't play him against one of the best offenses in baseball. And then on the other side, we got Charlie Morton. I don't really love Charlie Morton today, too. You get the Mets outside of City Field, and they actually have a you know plenty of bats in this lineup that can beat up on Charlie Morton here. I, I think if you're going to play Charlie Morton, you definitely want to play him against like right-handed heavy teams that don't have a ton of power. Um, I mean, you're you're the guy that watches Charlie Morton. You said you wanted to ship him off for. Um, you know, no, I just cash want to, to the bull, bull yeah. That's all. That's all it was. <laughs> um, <laughs> any interest here in Morton? Let me say this, Stevie, for what it's worth. I have seen Charlie Morton pitch in real life in a brave uniform, and I must say, the dude can pitch. Like he, oh, he's he a good knows. In real life, yeah, yeah. He, I mean, in real life, he he knows how to pitch. He's just getting older. Um, I, but I'm with you. I I think at 10K. I'm okay with the Morton fade today with him being a yeah. top three price on the slate. If he was 8,500, Stevie, we're having a totally different conversation. At 10K, though, I, I'm I'm okay leaving him on the show. Yes, yeah, it's I mean the price obviously a factor. I, I kind of like the Mets a little bit today, um, just in general. So like Morton, he he drew kind of like a, a dream first start. Like the White Sox offense is awful this year. We're gonna we've been picking on them already. We're gonna continue to do it. Um, their offense is just terrible. So like that's a great spot for Morton. This isn't like you look at the matchup and uh, Nimmo, Lindor, Beatty. You know even like Jeff McNeil. McNeil doesn't strike out a lot, and he's a guy that's gonna give Charlie Morton fits. You know, and then you get the power with like Alonzo in there. So I just think it's a bad spot overall. And like Charlie Morton's biggest issue last season was. Just give up a ton of hard contact and a lot of barrels. And if you give up barrels to a guy like Pete Alonso outside of City Field, 
he's going to take you deep. So let's talk about those Mets bats. Kind of already just said who I like here. You know, I like Pete Alonso a lot. I like Brandon Nimmo. Um, Alvarez at catcher is someone that is really interesting to me today. He's 3,500. Yeah, he's just, he's kind of in that like Ruiz range now where, all right, now he's outside of city field and I think we could take some shots on him. Um, so I like probably like a three man Mets stack for me, you know, kind of mixing in like McNeil, Alonzo, Alvarez, Lindor, and Nimmo. I don't know if I full stack the Mets here cause the Braves bullpen is solid, but I, I do think the Mets like three man is fine or, or four, four on like FanDuel. Yeah. Listen, I'm forward with Alonzo McNeil. The, the thing about the Mets Stevie is, Outside of Lindor and Alonzo, they're actually pretty affordable. Like nobody's really yeah. breaking the bank. And I think, you know, like you talked about getting them in Atlanta at Truist at Truist Park, I, I I I'm perfectly fine with running some mini stacks of them. And I think that's where I'm at too. I don't I don't wanna look, they're still the Mets for some reason. They just God, they struggle to score runs so much, Stevie. But the opportunity will be there for him in this spot. I'm okay with it for sure. Yeah. So like on Friday, I, I won off Jeff McNeil a lot. I think he was like 2,900 or something. He was really cheap. Mm-hmm. I don't remember exactly. Oh, he was 3,400. So um, I won off him because I mean, they were in Cincinnati. So, and yeah. he hit his home run. So that was, that was nice. Um, I was really close on Friday too. Just missed on some bats. Didn't have a lot of Red Sox, so got caught late on Friday. Um, oh, yeah, tournament. that's yeah. Oh man, did the Red yeah. Sox? They just, whoo. Yeah, I mean that's always a catch twenty two for me because I'm a Sox fan. Uh, let's talk about the Braves. I mean, probably the best st- stack outside of Arizona. So, like, if you're not stacking Arizona and cores against a terrible pitcher, Atlanta is that stack you're looking at to pivot off of them. Um, I mean, there's nothing that you're going to say that I'm not going to agree with and nothing I'm going to say that you're not going to agree with. You want to take as much as you want here against Julio Tehran. The best thing about Julio Tehran, too, is he doesn't really walk people. So you're going to get a lot of strikes thrown here. And Throw if you're a throwing a lot of – yeah, just <laughs> – uh, Load up on the Braves. It's a great spot. Matt Olson might be my favorite hitter on the slate today. Yeah, Matt Olson hit a home run today in today's matchup. Let me tell you something, Stevie. Like, here's the fear of the Braves, because you've already summed it up. Play the Braves, folks. We don't have to sell you on that. This, this is an easy one. Here's the fear of the Braves. No lead is safe. Have you – I don't think people have realized the Braves have been down 8-2, 6-3, and they just come back and win, Steve. Like, any inning, they could score eight runs. It's crazy. Like, that yeah. – it's amazing. So – I've been very pleased with our offense. God, I hope Strider is mostly okay. If we can get him back somewhere in the middle of the season, I'd take that, Stevie, as long as he's 100% healthy. And uh, if Chris Sale is healthy, Stevie, if Chris Sale is healthy in August, I'm going to count that as a win for the pitching staff. If he's healthy in August, win, win, win. And uh, old man Charlie Morton will keep going. If Max Free can figure out whatever's going on with him, I think we'll be all right. Sorry, I didn't mean to go on my fan rant. Play the Braves next game. I just want to, like, point out Atlanta's expensive on DK. Um, Kelnick at 3800 is a great price tag. And Harris, like, towards the bottom of the order. But both of these guys have plenty of power and upside. So um, I, I just wanted to, like, I okay, Atlanta, love Atlanta. You know, I'm not going to sit here and, like you said, I don't need to break down the stats. It's a great spot for them. But I just wanted to point out, like, Kelnick and um, Harris because they are on the cheaper side. And I think that being down in the order, maybe they have a little bit lower ownership. Probably not, though. I I mean, this is going to be a spot Atlanta is going to be popular. And they should be. They they really should be. All right, Dodgers and Twins, eight and a half total in this game. Dodgers, a 146 favorite. Paxton against Ober. Let's talk James Paxton here at 8,700. Any interest here in him? Stevie, I I do have interest. This caught me off guard, I must say. And I think it caught a lot of us off guard. Stevie, Paxton with 97 pitches in his first start this season. Like, I, 
I was actually expecting somewhere in the 80s ish, like 83, 83 to 85. So for him to come out, and maybe they were just trying to let him close it out, but for him to come out and pick up 97 pitches, you know, Minnesota is a team already this season that has been striking out a bit now. Um, probably more so the righties than lefties, but even still, like I, I think this is a good spot for Paxton. 8,700, Stevie. Um, I I really liked him a ton. And Derek said so. He said pitchers seem more stretched out than normal this season. A lot of them are. Um, they didn't have the WBC this year, so they went through a full spring training. So some of these guys got five starts in spring training. Some of them, not all of them. Some got four. And uh, I, I think I think everybody was more ready to go after the rule. Ch- like they were ready for the rule changes. It wasn't, you know, something that snuck up on them and they had to kind of work through. They were ready for it. So I think all those things contributed to a lot of these pitchers being more ready. I still think they'll – clean up some of their mechanics to get better middle of the season. But, but absolutely. A lot of these guys started out going 80, 90 pitches. Yeah. So he struggled a little with command in that start against San Francisco, which is a little concerning. Um, he had stretched out to like 83 pitches in his final um, spring training, mm-hmm. like bullpen slash um, game. So I thought 90 was doable. Never thought 97 was doable. Um, I like Paxton a lot today. He might be my favorite pitcher on the slate. Um, so, I mean, if you're considering price, right? Like you, you have to consider price. Eighty six hundred yeah. on Fanduel, eighty seven hundred on DK. Like you know, obviously you got Snell. You have some of these guys that we talked about already with Luis Castillo and Barrios. Those guys are all more expensive than him on Fanduel. So this is a good spot for Paxton. You look at Minnesota, and they they're not going to be able to get all the left handed hitters out of this lineup. Julian's going to hit. He's a lefty. They typically play Kirilov and Kepler. So mm-hmm. we're potentially looking at like three to five left-handed hitters here. I think it's probably more on like the three side, but Paxton's, I mean, even through his struggles in, in his career has always been a lead against left-handed hitters. So um, love this spot for Paxton. I think this is a great spot. You know, you worry a little bit about the command, but I mean, first start of the season, I'm willing to give him a little bit of a pass here because you look back and, he didn't really walk people at a high rate last year, like 8% walk rate um, in 411 plate appearances. So I, I think it's more of that first start, new catcher, all that kind of stuff. So, yeah, I like Paxton a lot. Ober on the other side here, like, I'm sorry, man. You, you get you get uh, at, or the Dodgers today. I'm, I'm probably going to have to pass on playing you. Yeah, I'm not playing Bailey Ober. And Stevie, the, the funny part about it is, he got Kansas City's first start. He went 1.1 innings. Now, you know, all spots aren't created equal and all teams aren't created equal. Kansas City is not as bad as they've been in the past two or three seasons. I think they're going to be much more improved, Stevie. Will they go to the playoffs? Um, a whole lot of TBD, but I definitely think their team is better. And I, I just I, – I don't see how Bailey over pitches around the Dodgers. I, I just don't see it. I, I just don't see it. Yeah, I no. Uh, there's no chance I'm I'm playing him. Like you said, he just he got absolutely shelled by Kansas City in that start, and now he has to face the Dodgers. Like, nope, hard pass. Um, let's talk Dodgers bats. See, I think the Dodgers potentially set up as a pivot off of Arizona and Atlanta as well. Yeah. You know, that's why yeah. I said when we were when we were starting the slate, and I was like, there's plenty of teams to play today. That's because there is. I, I mean, the Dodgers are in a great spot. They're expensive, but they should get some of these bats in there. Love Max Muncy's price today. Uh, got the day off on Sunday. Gets to come out here fresh. And, I mean, I, I like the price tag for him quite a bit. And Gavin Lux hasn't been great to start the season, but he's still really cheap. He helps kind of make the stack work. And I, I'm willing to play really anybody that cracks the lineup today against Bailey Ober. Yeah, same here, man. I mean, my boy Hayward went to the IL. He was like my sneaky cheat bat, Stevie, that I that I would kind of plug in some of these stacks at the bottom. You know, he was back somewhere around seven to eight. Can't use him now, and that's okay. But I still think, Stevie, with you know, with this lineup, you know, you, you can get Otani and Freeman in if you want to, along with bets, but it's gonna cost you. You're gonna need a cheap pitcher. I don't think that's completely optimal. But I think you can get one of the three in with ease, Stevie, plus some of the others, like uh, Outman, like 
uh, Muncie, like um, uh, Will Smith, if you want to do that. So that's what I'm saying. Like, I, I think there are ways to build this lineup out. And if if Oprah's as bad in this start as he was in his first start, he probably won't be this bad. He could be, but I'm going to assume he's not as bad. It, it won't matter where you pick guys from out of the lineup, Steven. Hits were coming from all over the place. So that's what I like about this fire. You can run the bottom of the order and wrap around with one of the big backs and still have the production you need. One thing I want to point out, and it's still very early, very small sample size, Minnesota's bullpen has been one of the best bullpens to start the season. Um, if the Dodgers get out to kind of what you, if the Dodgers do what you want them to do stack wise and they get out in this game anyway, you're not going to get the good part of the bullpen. So it doesn't really matter, but just something to keep in the back of your head as we keep rolling here and kind of watching the numbers just in general, Minnesota's bullpen has been legit. Um, so, all right, let's talk about the Minnesota bats here against Paxton. Anybody that you want to play here against Paxton? Um, no, I, I'm going to pass Stevie. Like, look, obviously, you know, anybody can get a hold of anything. Byron Buxton could get one off anybody. Correa could get one off anybody. But I'm just, I'm not worried about it, man. I'm going to let it ride. So I'm, I'm fading. If you um if you punt catcher on non-Paxton teams, Vasquez, if he draws the start here, always good power against lefties. Um, used to play with the Red Sox, so. Uh, you know, if you wanna if you wanna look at some power upside at catcher on teams you're not playing packs, and if Vasquez starts this game, uh, he's playable here. All right, we got Philadelphia at St. Louis, eight and a half total, kind of a pick 'em game. Spencer Turnbull against Miles Mikolas. Uh, any interest here in Spencer Turnbull? Yeah, man, at sixty nine hundred, I've got some interest. Uh, I've seen way too many strikeouts from Nolan Arenado. Uh, so I, I uh, once again, I think St. Louis will be okay. I'm not going to write them off yet as being like a terrible team, but some, something's going on there. Turnbull is 6900. I think he's probably Stevie, one of the one of the cheaper guys today that people are going to have some interest in. So I, I like him quite a bit. I, I may even like him more than Barrios. Yeah, St. Louis has been awful um, to start the season. They're one of a few teams that have an ISO under 100 against right-handed pitching. Um, so the thing with Turnbull, so, Will, I had to do my due diligence, right? Like, the people expect me to give them some pitching updates here. So Spencer Turnbull, seven strikeouts, seven ground balls, seven strikeouts. Like, that's not Spencer Turnbull. So did a little digging and just getting more break on the curveball in that first start. Velocity was up a tick, but not a ton. So, I mean, if he could continue to generate the the movement on the curveball in this spot, he should pitch well. I mean, St. Louis, like you said, they've they've kind of stunk. They're not walking. They're free swinging. Derek's in chat. He'll tell us um, his Cardinals are off to a really shaky start. So, my only concern here, Will, is Spencer Turnbull is everybody's cheap play, and he gains a lot of steam throughout the day. A chalk Spencer Turnbull scares me, even as bad as the Cardinals have been. So if he starts to get chalky, I might lower my ownership a little bit. But I was shocked when I saw this game and I was like, it's a pick 'em. And St. Louis is kind of favored at minus 118 because Miles Mikolas stinks. Um, I mean, <laughs> okay, the Cardinals bats have been bad. And you look at the Phillies bats and outside of Schwarber and Harper, this team's off to kind of a slow start, not a ton of power, but uh, what are your thoughts here when it comes to Miles Mikolas? I won't be playing Miles Mikolas today. Um, I mean, look, man, I know he kind of pitched around San Diego, but he still gave up seven hits, Stevie. Like, it's not like he got not missing there. bats. Yeah. I mean, not, nothing really changed between those two performances except bad. Everything else was almost identical, so I'm not, I'm not being fooled here. Uh, definitely not playing Miles Mikolas. Well, at like one point of his career, we like played Miles Mikolas to like go out and generate soft contact and ground balls. He's not doing either yeah. one of those things right now, um, you know. And we started to see that trend last year. He had a 48 percent hard hit rate last night, so or last season. So yeah, I mean, Mikolas for me, even at 5300, is going to be a pass. 
Philadelphia is another team that I really like today. You know, again, like I think that we got plenty of bats. We got plenty of pitching. This makes for a fun slate. Nine games. Great slate. Um, I'll let you go first here. What do you like for Philadelphia? Stevie, I'm starting to hate Philly a little bit because I feel like I've been on them almost every start and they did. They keep disappointing me, but I, I know it's coming, but uh, give me Schwarber. I don't hate Schwarber. Obviously give me Harper. I don't hate Harper. Like I, th- those are two bets. I don't have to sell you on Stevie. I'm assuming Bryson stock plays today. I don't, I don't feel like, I don't, I don't think he sits. So he's 4,200. I think he'll be there. Uh, Trey Turner, 5,800. Give me him, Stevie. Like, like the fact that, you know, he might be able to run a little bit today. Not saying that Nicholas is, you know, just giving up gobs of steals, but a guy that's going to pound the strike zone, Stevie, and give Turner a chance to get on base, right? He's not going to be blowing too many balls by him. So Turner's going to have a chance to see some good pitches. If he can get on base, I think he's got a shot at, at some really nice upside here. So I uh, like the Phillies today and, and like those handful of bats that I discussed. Yeah, Philadelphia is definitely going to be a five-man stack that I like today. Like, yeah. this is a team that – or, like, the more we go through this slate, the more I might build, like, four fours than five threes today, um, just in general. So, I mean, every, I might every, mirror everything you say. Uh, I really like Stott. He's a guy that I was going to bring up that I, I really like. The only other guy that you didn't bring up that I really like today is Brandon Marsh, um, 3,600, yeah. off to a really strong start to start the season. So uh, Marsh is another guy that I don't mind playing. And, you know, he's another guy that offers you some home run stone base upside like Turner. Yeah. St. Louis. Uh, I mean, this is the problem, right? Like the problem is like, we just don't want to play any of these bats right now. Um, I mean, anything here on the Cardinals? Oh man, I don't think so, Stevie. And I, I feel like I may end up regretting it, but I, I'm, I'm going to live with the results. Once again, I, I do feel like Stevie sometimes like first, you, you just have to go with what your eyes are showing you. And right now, St. Louis is not a good, good offensive team. And you, if you got Spencer Turnbull being a reasonable pitcher today, I just don't think St. Louis is able to run run the score up. I, I'm fading this team. Yeah, I mean Brandon Donovan is a guy that I've been playing as a one off. Uh, he's he's like the one bright spot right now of this team. Um, multiple hits in three of his last five games. Just. Really solid, still under 4K over there on DraftKings, and should continue to hit leadoff. So, like, Donovan's the guy. As many hits as he wants. Nobody's bringing him home. Yeah, I mean, (laughs) uh, it's a great point. So, (laughs) it's a great point. I I don't mind Gorman. Gorman's going to eventually get going, too. And this is more, more of also just thinking of, hey, Turnbull might be getting some ownership today. Maybe I play, like, a little three man of Gorman Donovan and whoever catches like Contreras is banged up right now. So like if he's out, then I get a cheap catcher and I'm looking at this as like a very cheap, like mini stack. So, and if I'll be honest, man, if Turnbull gets a lot of steam and we see him really chalky, I might hedge stack. Because I'm going to play some Turnbull. So I might hedge stack. I might build one of my like five teams with like a hedge St. Louis stack and just say, hey, maybe the Cardinals have it today. They haven't had it all season, but hey, today's the day, St. Louis. I I, I, I think I played St. Louis in one start, Stephen. I think they did score six, six or seven runs, but um, and, and that, I can't remember. What, I think that actually might have been like a four-game slate, Stevie. Some weird slate mm-hmm. where they actually scored some runs and you had to have them, and I did. Almost one, but you know, close but no cigar. All right, Houston at Texas. Yes, it drives me crazy every single time. Um, Sorry. Nine and a half total. Houston's a 130 favorite. I don't understand this line. Framber Valdez, Andrew Heaney. I get Texas is a good team, but when you look at the two pitchers that are pitching in this game and you're like Valdez against Heaney and this game's minus 130, all right. Um, Any interest here in Framber Valdez? Stevie, I just... I think he's okay. I, I, I'm not sure yet. And I, I hate to not know, like, right now. My my mind's telling me no. My body's telling me yes. Uh, <laughs> I, 
I don't think I get the Fran for today, Stevie, because I think I think I'm sad to say. I think I'll end up way cheaper than him or more expensive than him with like Paxton, Eflin, Castillo. Like I don't think I need him today. I don't think it's okay. I don't think it's worth the risk against the Texas Rangers, and that's that, that's what it comes down to. Even though he's eight K. So here, here's my thoughts on Valdez right now. My thoughts on Valdez is I don't necessarily like Valdez in general. He's a really good real-life pitcher. But DFS-wise, he doesn't typically have a ton of ceiling. I will say this about Valdez. He is elite against lefties. 32% K rate last season, 62% ground balls, very, very little barrels, good swinging strike stuff. So... I kind of want to wait and see the lineup because they're going to have Seager in there. They're going to have Evan Carter in there. Do they leave Jared Walsh in there? Is Josh Smith going to have, because they're dealing with some injuries right now. So like, is Josh Smith going to have to play? Is Jankowski going to have to play? So if he gets like four or five lefties and I can see like his, his like four strikeouts, maybe turning into six Valdez is efficient. So I could see him having like six to seven really good innings. And if if we can get that like five or six strikeouts, maybe. But I mean, you still got to get around like Garcia, Wyatt Langford, Marcus Simeon. Um, Heim is a good, again, you know, he's good from the right side of the plate. So it's really going to come down to lineup for me on Valdez. And I, I think that is kind of how you have to approach him on this site. You got to look and see what Texas is doing. Uh, any interest here in uh, Andrew Heaney? No. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I. I mean, not against you Houston, at, man. <laughs> yeah, you look at. Yeah, look at the start against Tampa. I mean, good strikeout stuff. Um, you know, thirty-five percent Ks in that start. He had sixteen point seven percent swinging strike rate, and I think that's just more of like Tampa's lineup. They're striking out a lot to start the season, and they're just missing that like it factor right now in Tampa Bay. So I think I'm out on Heaney, and like you said, this lineup is really good against left-handed pitching. Um, I think this is a really tough spot, and um, well, let's add another team that I like again today. Uh, let's talk about the Houston Astros. Yeah, man. Uh, love the Astros. Um, honestly, Steve, the Astros are probably the team I've played the most so far this season. I've played them more than the Braves, I think, um, to be quite honest. Them in Arizona, maybe. I, I think, but I, I've played a whole lot of these teams. But Steve, the Astros, they just keep raking, man. And when you're telling me you're going to give me Altuve against a lefty, you know, uh, you're giving me, and of course, Stevie. Uh, Yanir Diaz, the catcher, he's been good. Uh, you know, cooled off a little bit here the past couple of games. That's okay. You know, you're giving me Bregman, who, while he hasn't flashed big upside yet, man, I got to think it's coming at some point. Um, you know, uh, McCormick, all these guys, I just, Myers, they got so many guys, Stevie. I just think it's a big time spot for them, especially for a guy like Heaney, who, while he does have to strike an upside, can get erratic with his control. And if you start walking the Houston Astros, you're in a world of trouble. You're, you're basically asking for runs to come home. So really like the Astros here. I uh, think this is the spot they could get off. Yeah, and he, he doesn't typically pitch deep into games. Um, so uh, let's talk about the Texas Bats. Uh, one thing that I've already noticed to start the season is just how bad the Houston bullpen has been. Um, so I think like – if you, God, I hate stacking against Valdez because he's just a good ground ball guy. So I don't know if this is the spot I stack against Valdez. But man, if you can get Valdez out in like the fourth or fifth inning in this game and he just doesn't have it today, this stack has a tremendous amount of upside. Um, and we're kind of seeing that here with this game as far as like Houston being a 130 favorite with Heaney and Valdez facing off against each other. But um, what are your thoughts on the Texas bats? Yeah, I mean, I don't mind a one-off on Garcia. I don't mind a one-off on Simi. Like, Steve, you know, some of these, these these righties here. But Garcia, for me, even if I'm playing, um, even if I was playing uh, Valdez, I, I'd have some Garcia here, Stevie. I mean, he 
this this guy can rake against against right and lefty. So uh, I, I'm in on him, but I, I'm not I'm not stacking Texas today for sure. All right, let's go to Coors, Arizona at Colorado, 10 and a half total in this game. Arizona, a 174 favorite. Zach Gallen, Kyle Freeland. Any interest here in Zach Gallen? I do have interest in Zach Gallen, Stevie. Uh, one of the things, as, as much as I am anti Coors, and you already know I'm fading Arizona today for what it's worth. It, that's a terrible it, decision. It, it is, but that's, that's how I play because Arizona's <laughs> going to be through the roof. Through the not today, team. not today, not today. You, you think I, because of the prices? No, I just think because there's like four or five really good stacks and really good spots. I mean, sure, okay. it's cores, it's cores, but I don't think they're going to be as chalky as uh, as normal here. Because like okay. the uh, Fandle, Fandle for sure, because Fandle priced Arizona up a ton. DraftKings, like you'll get the ownership on. Uh, guys like Alexander, who's really cheap. Um, Grichik, who's really cheap. So, I mean, those guys will have ownership, but I don't think you're going to see a ton of ownership on like Carroll, Gariel, Marte. Like those Carole guys are. Today? They sat him against the lefty last start. This there game. is no chance they're sitting <laughs> him against Kyle Freeland. Freeland throws mush balls. Um, <laughs> I'm uh, just saying, you, you yeah. do you, and I respect you and how you play. There is zero chance that I'm fading Arizona today. I, I just yeah, want to well, throw that out there. Well, I'm not fading Zach Gallon. So, see, here's yeah. the thing, Stevie. Here's where I, here's here's probably where I differ a little bit. Oftentimes, we don't want to play pitchers in Coors, but we'll load up on the bats. I'm totally opposite. I'll fade the bats all day. Colorado is just not good. It doesn't. It doesn't matter. You're giving me Zach Gallon at 8,200. Stevie, you know, last last out of the gift the Yankees, 96 pitches. I don't even care about the fact that he went six and six Ks. I like the fact that he went 96 pitches, which means he stretched. He's now getting a better matchup. Yes, I know in course, like I get it. I, I know the ball isn't gonna, gonna have the same drop. Like I get that, but Gallon against Colorado, whether he's in Coors. City Field, Truist Field, the Great American Small Park. I play him in any of those spots. Zach Gallon is actually one of my favorite pitchers today at 8,200 because of the price deduction he's getting. If they were in Arizona, Stevie, he'd be 9,500 in this spot. Guaranteed. I, I love Zach Gallon today. Um, Yeah. So for me, he, I don't know, he throws what? Well, he throws a slider, a changeup. Um, he's not going to get as much break on his curveball, which is kind of his like go-to out pitch. Um, I like Zach Gallen. Um, I'm just worried a little bit here. Like the other thing that in the back of my head that worries me in this spot is he's facing Colorado for the second time in his three starts. Like this is a guy that has already pitched against this team once this year. So like, I'm a little concerned about, that as well but overall if he's going to be lower owned he's a thousand dollars too cheap so if he's going to be lower owned um i'm definitely interested in playing um some zach gallon do you have any interest here in playing uh this guy named kyle freeland no yeah don't do that um whether whether you want to take a stand or not um on this team sure i get it kind of um Talk to me here about Arizona bats. Yeah, so look, folks, you know, Chief isn't crazy, okay? I don't play I don't play bats in cores. You're because- you're crazy for fading Arizona in cores against Kyle Freeland. Yes. I will I will speak for chat. Chat is gonna call you crazy too, but I'm gonna tell you right now, okay, it's the first game at elevation for Arizona. You can have that argument. But Kyle Freeland stinks. He doesn't miss bats. I can hit off Kyle Freeland. Like, set it up. Whoever listens to the podcast that's friends with Kyle Freeland, set it up. I'm taking Kyle Freeland deep. I like it. I I might actually be able to hit one, uh, scrape one off Kyle Freeland. I wasn't a power hitter, Stevie. I was going to poke it through above the shortstop, above the, you know, above the first baseman off the bag. Like, that's kind of stuff. Those are my kind of hits. And I was going to beat you. I was going to beat you with speed and precision. Not power, but uh, my my point is this: 
I think Arizona's fine here today, Stevie. Like, I'm not, I'm not telling anyone to not play Coors. People just know I don't play Coors, but I, and, and I can't convince anyone to not play Guriel and Walker, Moreno. You know, Su- Eugenio Suarez, Marte. You need to be playing these guys. This is a great spot for them. Uh, I'm just not playing them because I typically fade Coors because of ownership. Now, once again, Stevie, I fade them because of ownership. If we pull up this late and somehow the Arizona Diamondbacks are down here in the 7 and 8% range, we got a totally different conversation here because now you're telling me you're not going to play them, and, and that, that makes me very happy. I still think they're the highest owned stack on the slate. Um, I just don't think they're going to be as high as they would be. Like, we have Atlanta, we have the Dodgers, we have Philly, we have Houston. Um, yeah. We've already talked about some of these, like, ginormous stacks so i just think that they could offset the ownership a little bit um and the mets if you're playing if you're playing the whole angle in the atlanta game yeah i mean christian walker is the top hitter on the slate today um he absolutely smashes left-handed pitching this should be a walk in the park for him Gritchick is too cheap he's gonna be one of the highest owned slate like guys on the slate gary l is a guy that has just started the season off super on fire. So, I mean, all these guys. I, there's not a guy, you know, a Blaze Alexander, cheap shortstop that potentially cracks the lineup here. Just Blaze. The guy that I think I'd fade here is Marino. And it's more of like, he's kind of expensive for me for a catcher. I like 3,200, 3,500 kind of range. So maybe I'm underweight on Marino here. Maybe that's my core stand. So he's going to hit two home runs. Uh, let's go to the other side here. Again, the Rockies stink. They're not a good offense, but they're a lot better at home. Um, shocking. When you play in course Field, you're better at home, um, not only because of the altitude and how the ball travels, but they have a huge ballpark. You can hit a double that turns into a triple in this ballpark um, quite easily. So I, if Gallon gets steamed up a little bit, I don't mind maybe looking at the Rockies. I don't mind looking at the Rockies. I don't in, in general here, just because I you don't typically get like uh, Rockies under 5%. And I think they're going to be pretty low owned on the slate. Oh yeah. I'm not playing any Rockies. I don't think Gallup's going to get, get as much ownership today. So even though he's cheap, you know, people yeah. don't like to play pitchers in court. They just don't. I think the field and like Sims are way sharper than it was three years ago. Like I just agree. in general, I, I agree. I agree. And yes. I feel like he'll project well because of how bad the Rockies are. So I mean, you look at the Rockies lineup and they have five or six guys with strikeout rates over twenty five percent against righties. So like Sim projections are gonna and projections in general are gonna be spitting him out here. So, but yeah, I mean, I don't I actually I don't hate the Rockies today. They're not overly expensive. Um, yeah. I don't I don't hate it. Tampa Bay at LA taking on the Angels, though. We got Zach Eflin and Tyler Anderson, eight total. Tampa's a 138 favorite here on the road. Uh, any interest in Zach Eflin? Yeah, look, I do like Zach Eflin today, Stevie. 9K. This is a guy that they haven't let him pitch past. 90 pitches yet, Steve? I mean, he had not even hit 85 pitches. But this is a guy that can keep the ball on the ground when he needs to, and he has some strikeout ability. And we do know that there are a handful of strikeouts or or some strikeouts in this in this L.A. Angels offense, including Mike Trout, who started out the season around, somewhere, I think, around 30%, 30% carry. That won't stay there. But the fact still remains that there's some strikeouts in this lineup. I like Eflin today at 9K, Stevie. And I don't think he picks up as much ownership as, say, a guy like Castillo because of the name value. But uh, I like Eflin. 9K, I'm in. I'm on the fence with him. Tampa has been very careful with their Mm -hmm. pitchers and how deep they're letting guys go. Uh, He got in a little bit of trouble in that Texas game when he was at 83. So I'm just kind of thinking potentially, like, he just got in trouble and they're like, he, they pulled him because of that and not because he was at like 83 pitches. But I like playing pitchers against the angels right now. So like Eflin's on my list. It's just whether or not like he ends up in a lot of my lineups or not, like his Sierra and X fifth way better than his ERA kind of got beat up in that Toronto game, but I don't mind Eflin in this spot. Throws a lot of strikes. Like you said, there's a lot of strikeouts in this lineup. 
not a very patient lineup outside the top half. Uh, other side, Tyler Anderson. Any interest here in Anderson? No, I, I don't. I don't need to play Tyler Anderson today. I mean, I know he had a really good outing against the uh, Miami Marlins, but that was about as good of a Tyler Anderson outing as you're going to get, Stevie. So I'm, I'm not being fooled here. Anderson isn't some guy that we're going to be rostering. In 7,600, he's more than Barrios. No way. I am so on the fence on this guy today. Like, uh, I don't know. I was looking into what happened in that first start, and, like, the dude just had an elite changeup in that start against Miami. Like, his changeout – his changeup <laughs> – he had a 50% whiff rate and a 41% put away percentage. Like that's massive. Like when you're when you're throwing that pitch as much as he threw that pitch in that game and like generating as much as he did as far as whiffs and outs, like he struck out all five guys um with the changeup. So he just really kind of used like his his four seamer and cutter to get ahead and just put put hitters away like with the changeup. So like I, I don't know. It was a little bit more velocity on his changeup than in the last couple of years. So I thought that was a little bit interesting. And I mean, spin wise, it had a little bit more spin, but it really mm. wasn't like a huge difference. But I don't know. Will, like looking at it for me, I, I'm like somewhat intrigued just because, like, I, again, I don't think Tampa is great to start the season. Like, there's a lot of holes in this lineup. And who did we just talk about that like faced them and pitched really well? Um, oh my gosh, who's the lefty that just faced Tampa? Heaney, Heaney. So it when you can kind of compare like Heaney's talents to like Anderson, maybe Heaney's a little bit better. But I don't know. I'm a little intrigued by Anderson today. I think there, I think there's some strikeouts in this lineup. So I'm gonna dig into it a little bit more. Again, this is a first look, but. At first glance, like I'm somewhat interested in like I'm pulling up Tampa against left-handed pitching this season. They're like right. I mean, they're under a hundred ISO. They're striking out 27% of the time. It should come up for them, but not right. But but you're right. They have yeah, been striking I, out for sure. I think I'm a little interested in, in Anderson here as a low own SP2 type play. Um I mean, he threw seven really good innings against, like, efficient 83 pitches, seven innings against Miami. I don't know. I'm I'm somewhat interested in this. I need to dig into – I need to dig into Anderson again, or, like, Tampa against changeups and see, like, is it potentially going to be an effective pitch against this offense? Um, and I'll do that in the morning when I have more time. But um, any interest here in the Tampa bats? Uh, not really. I don't want to play Tampa bats either. I just felt like Anderson might have been priced a little bit too high, and Barrios is kind of my my litmus test today for anybody I want to play under him. So if, if they're not or above him, so if they're not, if I don't feel like they're equally better, if I don't feel like they're better than Barrios, then they're probably getting cut out. So that that's that's just where I landed on Anderson. But yeah, I'm I'm not thrilled about playing Tampa Bay today. I'm 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 so intrigued by. Anderson, I don't know. I don't. As Listen, of right now, don't I don't go have down a ton the rabbit of hole, man. I, I I hop on baseball savant sometime, and I get go down a rabbit hole, then I'm stuck. So I'm not saying you're on baseball savant, <laughs> but that's my rabbit hole. So oh no, <laughs> no, no. I everyone knows where I'm at. I'm just looking at. I'm looking more at like this seems awful against changeups, man. Um, I don't know. I'm gonna dig into this more, but like at first glance. Anderson could pitch really well here, and I don't expect him to get a ton of ownership. I don't really have a ton of interest in Tampa. If I was playing Tampa, it'd be Diaz, a Rosarina, and they're so expensive that I just feel like there's better spots. Um, Paredes is okay at his price, and the other guy I wanted to point out is Jose Siri. He gives you like that stolen base upside. He is much better against lefties, so like you could potentially take a shot on him and. He's cheap enough where if he gets you a hit and a stolen base and a run scored and gets you 10 points, it's not going to kill you. So um, I don't mind that. And I'm really intrigued by Anderson. I'm going to be doing some digging um, on this one. The things you find on the morning grind. Um, any interest here in the Angels bats? Uh, 
negative. This whole game is pretty much a scratch off from the outside of the pitching. So uh, too, too many offenses, Steve, for me to be worried about Tampa Bay and the Angels today, even with Mike Trout. Thing is, like Mike Trout's not going to get any ownership today. Um, and as much as he's been striking out, like Mike Trout, a healthy Mike Trout to start the season, I think he has four home runs already. He's stolen some bases. Like, yeah. He's one of a few guys that can get you 30 plus that's not in course, right? Like he's that he's that type of guy. So I, I mean, Mike Trout doesn't play for the Dodgers yet. It's just buying everybody. I mean, Dodgers are gonna be <laughs> tough to beat this year, buddy. <laughs> yeah, I mean, for me on the Angels, Ward and Trout are the only two guys that I like I, I like to play. They're like the two hitters that continue to produce. Um, one of the reasons that we have an interest in Eflin is because the Angels lineup hasn't been great. Cubs and Padres, seven and a half total. Padres, a 138 favorite. Javier Assad against you, Darvish. Uh, any interest here in Assad? Uh, man, maybe, Stevie. Like, San Diego still, they, they haven't been a crazy high strikeout team to start the season. At least the last day I checked, I don't think they had. I think they're a little bit higher than last season. Like, I know, um, what's his name? Is it Kim? Haseon Kim, I think. Mm -hmm. They strike out a little bit more than usual, but I, overall, I still think they're pretty close to where they're, they're going to be, in there, and I think that will not normalize. Once again, is, is the side better than Barrios today? I don't think so. I just so I don't think I'm going to pull the trigger. And I don't dislike a side. I just I, I think San Diego is good enough to keep him in check here. So I think a side. Got the rock, yeah. He got the Rockies last time yeah, out. Um, exactly. in really good, in really good pitching conditions. Um, and I think a lot of people liked him. I think I played him a little bit. I know Cheese liked him. Um, way different spot in this one. Yeah. San Diego is the like you mentioned, they're the lowest strikeout team in baseball right now against right handed pitching to start the season. They have a 16.9% team strikeout Ooh, rate against righty. It's like, and this guy. He doesn't necessarily have like overpowering stuff. Um, he got hit really hard. He only had a 5.6% swinging strike rate in that first game against Colorado. It's just the Rockies aren't very good, and the hitting conditions in that game were awful. Um, Yeezy asked me Assad or Anderson. Right now, I think I'd pick Anderson over Assad today. Um, I don't think like um I don't like Assad at all. Um, so I'm, I yeah. think I'm out on a side. I like, I'm with you. I'm with you 100%. It was, I feel like it was just a situation play last time out. Like he had a great matchup. He had good pitching weather. I just think it was a situation play more than it was. We wanted to actually feel good about rostering Javier Assad last time out. Yeah. Um, sure. any interest here in you Darvish? I'm just okay on Darvish, Steve. I mean, listen, man, this is a guy that, I, I personally, I do like guys that know how to pitch, Stevie. Like, you, Darvish, knows how to pitch. He's been around the league. You know, he's pitched for the Cubs. So, this is a guy that's that's been around. He's a professional pitcher. Um, pitch count is coming up. I, I suspect he'll get to somewhere around 88 pitches in the start, Stevie. Um, and, and I think he'll be fine. Um, does he have as much upside as, you know, some other guys on the slate, maybe. Uh, I think he goes in my pool just because I know he can do it, Stevie. Not because I feel like he's absolutely going to go out here and mow down the Cubs today. I don't hate it. I don't love it. Um, yeah, I'm like, exactly. He's okay today. And the thing that I don't like about Darvish is he's been really good, like the first and second, like first, second times through the lineup. And then, like, the third time I watched that Cardinal start, he just. His command is still not there. Like, he only had one walk in that game, but the command, like, it's still not, like, there. He's still missing pitches, and you could tell that he's missing pitches, and the Cardinals weren't good enough to take advantage of it. Thing is, I don't know if the Cubs are good enough to take advantage of it, but they have some major league hitters at the top of this order. So, yeah. um, I, I think Darvish is okay. I like Castillo, Paxton, some of these other guys uh, more than I like Darvish today. But I don't think he's a bad play. Um, yeah. This game has a low total for a reason, uh, you know. So, uh, bats, any Cubs bats here? Yeah, I'm not going to play the Cubs today. I, you know, once again, 
I respect Darvish enough. To, I don't think the Cubs beat him up. That's really what it is, TV. Like I don't, I don't see them scoring ten runs here. They might score three, four max. I, I don't see ten runs here from the Cubs. Yeah, I mean, I I could see like a one-off Bellinger. The only problem is that Bellinger was really expensive. I haven't even checked. Um, yeah, he's fifty-four hundred. Like Darvish has been giving up a ton of hard contact to start the season. Um, he just. I mean, some of the matchups he's faced kind of have helped with that. So, like, if Bellinger was cheap, I don't have FanDuel and Yahoo pulled up in front of me. Like, if you could get Bellinger as a cheap one-off, like, Bellinger's 3,200 on FanDuel. If I end up in that range that was, like, an outfield, like, one-off, I would play Bellinger in that spot. Because I, I do think Bellinger has the upside to take Darvish Yard. I don't necessarily want to play Suzuki, even though he's been super hot to start the season. Um, he's 3,600 over there, and... 4700 on drafting. So I just feel like you're not going to get Suzuki at a good price tag. Those would be the two guys I'd be interested in, in, in if you wanted to just like throw away salary. Uh, any interest here in the Padres? Steve, I've been playing the Padres all season. I do think this is a spot where they could take advantage of a side. Um, I'm not going to get weary just yet, Stevie. Low K rates. Some power, some powers there. Ballpark's not great, but man, they got to start taking advantage of some of these weaker pitchers, and I don't want to miss out. So I, I'm stacking the Padres for that reason, Steve. I kind of like the Padres too. The more that we would like go through, like talking about Assad not being a guy that is going to overpower teams, the more I kind of have interest in like Javier Assad was like everybody's darling this first start, so maybe he just get some ownership here today when he really shouldn't. So, I mean, looking at his numbers last year, he gave up 55% hard hits and had a 7.6% swinging strike rate. So I could see, you know, a lot of hard hit balls here. Padres not going to get a ton of ownership. Um, maybe they're like, maybe they're like your late hammer. I like the Giants too. We'll talk about them in a second, but um, I don't mind the Padres today. I'd probably end up more like, three man stacking the Padres or like I said earlier I kind of like the four four stacks today so maybe like a, a, a secondary four four three man stack for the Padres all right we finish it out Washington at San Francisco seven and a half total Snell and Williams Snell's a 225 favorite here in his first start of the season Trevor Williams first um Trevor Williams actually was decent against Pittsburgh in his first start generated some ground balls and just kind of got out of some innings any interest here in Williams? No. Yeah, he's not a great pitcher. Um, Babbitt was definitely friendly to him in that first start of the season. Like, kind of looking at, like, his numbers on the on last year, like 16.9% Ks and a lot of hard contact with very, very little whiffs. And, I mean, that could hurt you, um, especially, like, how well Conforto has started the season. Yeah. Um. Snell, first start of the season, 10-3, did the extended spring training. So he threw an extra spring training game and then threw a simulated game, I think, on Thursday or Friday. Yeah, he threw one game. for sure. Yeah, he threw one for sure. I think Snell throws 80 to 85 pitches. That is my guesstimate. Um, I could see under. I could see a little over. But if I had to guess, like, personally, I'd say 80 to 85 pitches here for Snell. Yeah, I, I'm with you 100. percent And then, and then our next question, Stevie, is: Is that enough for him to blow past Washington? It just might be. Yeah, I was like, gonna say it might be enough. <laughs> yeah, it, it just might be. So here's here, here's my kind of range for Snell, Stephen. I don't want you to chime in this. I know you will. I think we either need something like five innings, eight Ks, or like for FanDuel, you might need something like six innings. Seven K, eight Ks, gives up two. Like you're gonna, you're gonna need some way to balance out the price for it to work. Um, if he goes five minutes, eight Ks clean, he's probably still pretty close, especially because he can qualify for the win if he gets the win. Um, but I think that's kind of what you'll need, Stevie, to justify ten three, because I, I don't think if he doesn't quite go the distance, I still think there are guys that could outscore him on this slate. And that that's that's really where I'm at with Snell. I think I'm going to play him because of the spot and because he is, in fact, probably the best 
one of the best pitchers on the slate. And just in case, Stevie, he goes the distance, I, I want to have some exposure. But I'm not going to be overexposed, to say the least. Washington has 103 plate appearances as a team against left-handed pitching this season. They have a 31 WRC plus, 31. League average is like 110 against left-handed pitching this season. They have a 31 WRC plus. They have a 215 Woba. They have a .074 ISO. They've been awful against left-handed pitching. Blake yeah. Snell, worth the price of admission today. 74 pitches in that extended spring training start. I just looked it up. So maybe he pushes 85 to 90 pitches here. I think five innings is kind of what they're shooting for here with Snell. Home start, first start in, with his new big big team, big league team. And, um, yeah, I, I mean, think Snell's they're great. excited and he's excited. This, yeah, this is, this is a, a good, great This is a match made in heaven for them, really. Yeah, good ballpark, too. It goes from a yeah. good ballpark to a good ballpark. So, um, yeah, I like Snell. 10-3 is a tough ask, but I, I do think, like, he's worth it. I mean, I might prioritize bats today, though because there's so many good hitting. So, like, I might end up on sn under on Snell just because I'm prioritizing bats. Yeah. I have no interest in the Washington bats here. Um, I like Lane Thomas against lefties. I'm not going to one-off Lane Thomas against Blake Snell. Yep. No Washington bats for me. Uh, let's talk Giants. I, I have some interest in the Giants today. I don't think Williams is good, and I think Conforto – is really underpriced for how well um, he's kind of started the season here. Like he's averaging, he has a 350 average. He's hit three home runs already, and he just continues to produce. Um, thoughts on the Giants? Yeah, I'm so glad you brought up Conforto, Stevie, because I mean, he started out the season in the 3K range and, you know, right at 4K now. I like him. I like Solaire. Jung Ho Lee. A uh, Jung Hu Lee, I, I know he's he's more of an on base guy, but this is a spot for him, Stevie. I'm telling you right now, you know he came over from the KBO as well. If Williams Williams isn't going to be the blow the ball by him at all, like he could he could be Stephen Kwan three for three, four for four in this spot. No kidding. So I, I really like Jung Hu Lee to kind of be the table setter here. Uh, he should be able to. He he has, in my opinion, he has good run equity today, Stevie. I might even take a prop on him. Over a half a run, I think he can get. I think he can get to home to home plate today. So really like him. Uh, don't hate Yaz, of course, man. Chapman thirty nine hundred, Stevie, still pretty cheap. Uh, like him. This is a really good team to stack today. I'm with you. You know the ballpark. I know it's not the best ballpark in the league, but they're facing Trevor Williams. G give me, give me the Giants today. Well, I mean, just looking at. The pricing: Bailey's thirty-two hundred on DK, Conforto's four K, Chapman's thirty-nine hundred, Lee is forty-one hundred, Solaire is forty-three hundred. So, if I'm using them as a, a secondary stack, whether I do four fours or five threes, I don't necessarily need them to go out and hit three home runs. Hey, would be fantastic, but I'm playing them more because I I do think they're just gonna beat up on Williams here. Washington bullpen still not good. We talked about it a ton last year, so. I, I like this spot for San Francisco as just a cheaper stack that kind of makes everything work. Um, so, yeah, I, I mean, I'm, I'm very much interested in the Giants here. Fun, man. Um, no, it ran a little over an hour. I try to keep the podcast under an hour, but fun nine game slate. Still early in the season. We got a lot to talk about, and um, we'll get through these faster as the season goes along. But let's play the morning grind game if you haven't already hit the subscribe button over there on the rotor grinders morning grind youtube page turn on notifications and come hang out with us live it's a lot of fun having chat going as we're doing the show will dk pricing under 8k to get six or more strikeouts who do you got today uh i think we have a lot of options stevie uh or, or some good options let me say that uh I'm going. I'm going with Turnbull. I'm. I'm. I'm going to go with with what I, who I think is going to be the darling of the slate. Give me Turnbull at 6900. Yeah, I mean, I'm going to go Barrios. I'm very yeah. interested in looking into Tyler Anderson. I don't have time to do that right this second, but um, give me Barrios against a very strikeout heavy Seattle team. Over 8K to score under 15. Who is your bust today? Over 8K, under 15. I'm really not thrilled about any of these guys, Stevie. I'm going to go right at 8K, though. Give me Valdez. 
Yeah. Um, I mean, I'm going to go Charlie Morton. I feel like it's more of just a price thing. I'm never paying 10K for Charlie Morton on this slate. So I hope he scores under 15. Like he might not. He probably ends up in like the 18 to 22 range. And I'm still okay with that because, I mean, he's 10K. Like Morton's just a guy that I'm not going to play today. So I'm hoping he scores under 15. Over 4K to hit a home run, not in cores. Who do you got going yard today? See, we got a lot of options here. Uh, I'm going with someone that I really like against a guy that can't blow the ball past anybody. Give me Brian Carpenter at 5,700. Love him against Nicholas today. Well, I think – so the last time um, I put Harper as the pitcher for the morning grind on Rotor Grinders, Harper hit three home runs. So I think I'll put him as the pitcher again today. So maybe he'll – you know, hit three home runs again. So there you go. Oh, oh, that that's fantastic. <laughs> I'd love three home runs from Harper. Yeah. Um, give me give me Matt Olson to take Julio Tehran deep here. Almost a free pick. Um, under 4K to get two hits. Who do you like under 4K to get two hits today? Man, Stevie, I'm gonna go home on this one. Give me Jared Kalinick at 3800. Yeah, I like Kalinick a lot. Uh, Brandon Marsh is my guy today. I, I really like Brandon Marsh. He does a great job getting on base and he does have that like power upside as well. Um, seeing the ball really well to start the season. So give me Brandon Marsh stack to score six or more runs. There's plenty of options today. Who do you got? Yeah. G- g- look, man, I'm, I'm going with, uh, the Dodgers. I just look, I don't trust Bailey over in this spot. Dodgers are a high powered offense. May not get as much ownership today. Give me LED. Yeah, I don't mind that at all. Um, I'm going to go Philadelphia. I just, I'm not a huge fan of Miles Mikolas, man. Um, you already talked about Harper. I like Harper, Schwarber, Turner. Really, anybody that cracks the lineup here with Philly. We talked about Stott. I just talked about Marsh. Um, Miles Mikolas just not missing bats. So I, I like this spot quite a bit for Philadelphia. So I'm going to go with Philly. Sorry, Derek. Um, any player props or pick them plays that you like here night before? Yeah, I was trying to see if I could find anything, Steve. It, it doesn't seem to be um, a whole lot rolling right now. Um, they are giving us Blake Snell at six and a half strikeouts against Washington. Uh I think he can get it, Stevie, believe it or not. G- give me Blake Snell more than six and a half strikeouts against Washington today, even though he's just coming out. I, I think, man, you know, this is the guy that can pick up two, two uh, inning here, one inning there, another two. Before you know it, he's got seven strikeouts and four innings. So I, I like Snell today. Yeah, I'm going to go to something that we just kind of talked about a few minutes ago. Um, Javier Assad's not a strikeout guy. Like, he had a 7.6% swinging strike rate and a 17% whiff rate last season. His strikeout rate was like 21%. Not a strikeout pitcher. Give me Javier Assad under three and a half strikeouts at plus 110 over there on FanDuel. I like this one quite a bit. San Diego, lowest strikeout team in baseball against right-handed pitching, a low strikeout pitcher. I think Assad ends up under four strikeouts here. So give me Javier Assad under three and a half. Uh, Any other bets that you like here? Uh, negative. I am good to go, my brother. <laughs> well, I know you don't like playing them because of ownership, but give me Arizona minus one and a half today. Zach Gallen against oh, Kyle yeah. Freeland. Give me Arizona minus one and a half. Uh, most books have this anywhere from minus 110 to minus 115. This is going to move before the morning. So um, jump on this one early. And uh, take advantage of this spot. Love this spot today. So give me Arizona minus one and a half. It's already moved. So it's at minus 115 now. And when I wrote it down earlier, it was minus 110. So um, I think this ends up closer to like minus 125, um, if not a little bit higher. So yeah, Arizona minus one and a half today. Gallon against Freeland in any ballpark. Give me Arizona minus one and a half. <laughs> so, yeah, absolutely. Uh, any final thoughts before we get out of here, my friend? Negative, man. Thank you guys for hanging in there with this long show, I know, or longer show than usual, but I hope you got some nuggets out of it, and hopefully you make a few dollars along the way. 
Yeah, great spot to start the the week, and um, hope everyone has a fantastic Monday. We're back on Tuesday talking more baseball. Good luck, everyone. We'll see you then.